Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Mask Off, a show where I discover the leader behind the mask. Today I'm very humbled to have a special guest with me, Dr. Mohammed Naji. I'm very humbled to have him on board today. Dr. Mohammed, you are the Executive Director of Liberty Medical Group, which involves Liberty Dental Clinics, Liberty Research and Training Center, Liberty Clar a Charity Initiative and Liberty Dental Lab. Liberty Dental Clinics alone has 16 clinics, each with their own specialty, and which was founded by your brother, Dr. Majnaji, 25 years ago, which is the primary clinic choice for celebrities and royals in the region. You're an investor, you run a youth mentorship program, which motivates the youth to achieve their true potential and have recently launched the world's first 3D dental NFT um, collection. You have a passion for dentistry, marketing, and was inspired by your brother to embark this journey. But today is about discovering your journey. This is what we think we know about you. But today is about actually getting to know you. If you allow me to take a bit of the layers off, sure. um, that Let's would be my it. honor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the first question that I always start for with my guests is how are you today or at the moment? Um, great. That's good. Yeah. You caught me at the best yeah. time now, you know. It's, uh, it's all the hype uh, and the buzz. Yeah, everything is going on and it's very cool. Yeah, Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Tell us, take us back to your journey, mm -hmm. um, back to your childhood. Tell us a little bit more about your childhood, how it all started. Well, I grew up in a typical uh, Arab house. Um, you know, my parents were five siblings, all boys. Um, and uh, it was it was a very you know good childhood with ups and downs obviously you know, whether it's with the family or mm. on a personal level. Uh, but I was very fortunate to have five fathers rather than one because there's a big gap between the age like between me and my brothers. So I kind of learned from each one of them at a different stage in my life. Had all kinds of different experiences that they went through. Mm -hmm. So it's very much like having experience without going through the the experience itself um, so yeah that's that's one of the you know one of the main things that I think I was blessed with um, and yeah bit by and, bit just made it through and mashallah like your brothers they're all giants in whatever field they have chosen alhamdulillah yes alhamdulillah. They've, they've been excelling at it yeah um, you know the, con the concept of stepping on the shoulder of giants yeah was that a big step for your pressure to feel like you had to growing up as a child because we all go through these phases. Who am I going to be? What sort of person am I going to color in my white book? How was that for you growing up? Look, it was a good and a bad thing. Good thing because, you know, you grow up in a place where you're constantly feeling that you're not doing enough. Mm. And this might be bad for a lot of people because it creates a lot of pressure, responsibility, a lot of self-blame. Mm. Um, but for me, after I pass a certain journey, I always look back and I go like, you know, if it wasn't for this kind of pressure, I wouldn't have pushed this hard, you know? And since that you know, brothers are meant to be equals, mm. that's the, the mindset, the human mindset. Um, and for me, I was always trying to, you know, run harder to get to their level, although there's like 15, 20 years difference between us. Um, so, Every time I did that, yes, it was difficult. It was a struggle to keep up with what they're doing. Uh, but when I stop and look back at, you know, everyone around me, like I already passed away, you know. You uh, had to run I, faster than I went, Yeah, I, I, went, I went much further than anyone that was, you know, kind of in my circle or my age in a way because I was trying to keep up with people who are much older than I am. Yeah. But the good thing is, you know, it's always good to look up to a brother. It's always good to, you know, you can always ask for feedback. It's, it's never personal in that way. Mm. Um, so yeah, it, it, I mean, that's the thing. It's the negative because you always feel the pressure and, and you know, uh, trying to keep up with a lot of things, but it's a good thing because it's a very strong motive. Well, they say diamonds are made under pressure. And you That's kind what they of say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think you've, um, you've kind of showed us that because you're the leader in NFTs. There's no dentist who has thought of, okay, let's, take, let's go 
where the world is going. Let's become an innovator and a leader in, uh, it's an undiscovered place. Yeah. So, and I'll, I'll come back to this, but sure. talking about brothers, uh, your brother, Dr. Majnaji, yeah. tell me how, were you always dis destined to work with one of your brothers and why him specifically? Because like you mentioned. Yeah, look, um, uh, Majd and I, we were the last men standing at home. All of our brothers got married before us. And uh, we lived in one room for almost nine years together, him and I. So yeah. that created a different kind of bond. Um, well, I was still a child while he was working already. He established the clinic and all, but like I've, I've seen it all. I've seen him go through his worst days and the struggles and everything we went through. So, you know, being a part of all of that, I always thought that one day eventually I would like to, you know, contribute, help him out, you mm -hmm. know, carry on with what he started. Um, and yeah, I think it was destined, you know, just as soon as I finished school, got into, you know, dental, uh, dental college and, uh, it was, uh, it was something that I wanted to do, and uh, alhamdulillah, it's been a good uh, journey. How is it now working with family? Is there like pressures, mixing business Initially, and yeah. I mean, there's always pressure in business. Uh, with family, it sometimes, you know, has its pros and cons. Um, but uh, with him at first, it was a bit tough because, you know, I had to learn a lot, and mm. like, he's not just any dentist. You know, there's a lot to get from him, a lot to prove yourself with because for every patient, you know, they walk into the clinic, they always have a choice of much energy. So why would yeah, they go to anyone else? That's you know? so true. So it, it took me, uh, um, you know, some extra effort to prove myself and, you know, kind of present something that he doesn't. So each of us does his thing now, basically. Mm, yeah. That is, that's true. So tell us about your journey as a dental student and how you came to choose your specialty, orthodontics. Um, I, look, uh, being around uh, Dr. Mesh the whole time and in Liberty and stuff, I got to learn a lot about prosthodontics and cosmetic treatments, you know, all the crowns, veneers, all that. So I kind of had a lot of knowledge for a GP to mm -hmm. know at that stage. And I thought that I wanted to learn something that is not really taught in dental school because, you know, orthodontics in, in undergrad yes. is like very basic, you know, they give just, you 2%. The, yeah, just the tips, you know. Um, so I thought I want to learn that. And I wanted to integrate both together in a way because, mm -hmm. you know, if you do orthodontic treatment followed by three end veneers, you know, the minimum yes. prep veneers, um, you kind of serve like a holistic approach, yes. you know, so, um, and it's a nice, neat, clean job. Very tough to learn and yeah. study and research and all, but when it comes to practical work, it's much, you know. And much, much more mo predictable. Much more predictable, controlled. Yeah. Um, and the, the patients are, you know, mostly young patients. So you keep like a younger vibe in the clinic and stuff like that. So um, it suited me more in a way. Much and, more, yeah. much much more sure. lively. And I think today, like with the development of scanners, 3D printers, everything, it's become a lot more efficient mm -hmm. in treatment. You can do all the planning three, digitally. Digital, and then yes. Just print it and tell your patients, you know, compliance is, might be a bit of an issue, but it's much more... Um, seamless process now yeah yeah um, for one to achieve such massive success it takes a lot of guts and a lot of persistence and there there's always this strong strong motive inside of us and only we know truly what motivates us what truly motivates you in life <laughs> what truly motivates me in life just you know um uh, it's it's not a specific thing. I mean, the end goal is always motivating, but on a daily basis, I just, you know, I, I can't go to sleep knowing that I am just the same person as I was in the morning. Mm. You know, like by the end of the day, there must be any kind of improvement, even if it's just new words that I learn or new that skills. Or that Not even sometimes, like sometimes it's not even mm. 1%. It's yeah. just, you know, a very minimal thing. I just... I, it's, it's a thing that I have in me. I don't know, it's a rule or it's a habit. I just can't go to bed knowing that I'm the same person that I was yesterday. That's amazing yeah. because you know the rule of accumulation. Yeah. The yeah. point one, yeah. uh, by the end of 365, uh, three, six, five, yes. it actually accumulates to become something massive. From dentistry, uh, going in, I guess, like being a business owner as well, what has dentistry taught you about business? Or what has business taught you about 
patience, dentistry. patience and details. Mm. Patience is, um, is very important in dentistry and details is even more important because, you know, we work with, that, that's Dr. Mez's quote, like he always says, you know, you always need to take care of the best details, but he says that for dentistry. For me, I say it as a lifestyle. So mm. um, we work with like what, five, five millimeters yes. width and like eight to 10 millimeters at most yes. uh, as a workspace. So uh, um, I learned to treat everything in my life accordingly, mm. just like that. If I'm, you know, painting a wall, I calculate it by millimeters. If I am, you know, uh, helping a friend out, I help him Does with that... millimeters. If whatever I do, I do it like that. And this is how I work in business. You know, everything has to be on point. Everything has to be, um, you know, very accurate. And as dentists, you know, you're working with patients, and that requires patience. Uh, <laughs> I so, like that. Yeah. Uh, That's true. So patience is is key in when it comes to business because a lot of people just get into something, you know, an investment, and they're like just waiting, and they think that the results should come up by tomorrow. If they don't see results within a few days, then they just, you know, it's a kind of it's the long term. Uh, yeah, right? they get disappointed, and they end it. No, I learned from my my career that you know you need to just give it time. Yes. Time does magic, so yeah. That's definitely true. And I think there's a saying which is like, how you do one thing is how you do everything. Everything, true. So if you do one thing and you're very focused to the detail, like it, it does show in all of your work. Yeah. But does it ever burn you out? Because you are a man of many hats. You, ha you wear so many hats, you do so many things, and you do it well. Alhamdulillah, yeah, Alhamdulillah. thankfully. Um, how does it, do you ever feel the stress I mean, we all do, but how do you deal with the stress or the bur Have you ever felt burnt out? I just dye the white hair every <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> I try to hide it, that's all. <laughs> that's the best trick. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, Thank God for scarves. <laughs> yeah. Um, look, I mean, if, if you want to succeed, you can't expect it to come for free. You know, that's and true. like you pay for that either financially or with your health or with your time or with your, you know, your, with your comfort. Mm. Uh, so it's, it's a give and take relation with, with your job or, or with your goals. Mm. Um, and, you know, the stress is, is part of the deal. Uh, but with time and with experience and with many, you know, hits and blows, uh, you realize that, you know, you just become immune at one mm. point, like you have a thicker skin. Yes. Uh, so it becomes easier, but it's just a mindset, you know, like if, 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 if you're prepared for what's next, if you're always, I mean, I always say hope for the best, but expect the worst. That's how I go. Yes. Like I'm hoping for the best, but I'm always expecting the worst so that no matter what happens, you know, this is, this you, is meant to happen. Yes. It was going to happen. It's just, you know, an obstacle. It's going to pass. Yes, uh, yes. So that's how I deal with it, you know. And I always remember something worse that happened. Yes. And we made it. We we make it through eventually. Yeah, it's like athletes. Pretty it's, much. Yes, they they you have to go through the bad days to get to the good, good days. Good days, yeah. And without one another, it doesn't no, work. It doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't work. Yin yang. You know, yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's the deal. Yeah. Um, you mentioned something about paying price. Yeah. What price do you feel like you paid? Uh, I think peace of mind and youth, mm. my youth days. Uh, they, um, they say, well, what was the thing? Uh, uh, work while they party, uh, with, you know, something like that. Work. Uh, uh, you know, stay up while they sleep, work while they party. Something uh, like yeah. that. So um, I did that. Um, missed out on a lot, you know. I have, you know, there's a lot of things that at my younger age, where I was supposed to, you know, just go crazy and do yeah. my thing, uh, I was taking it very seriously. Like I was very harsh on myself. Um, so, and obviously this takes away from your peace of mind in a way, because, you know, looking around, everyone is doing their thing and you're just, you know, focusing on this one thing. So that's one thing I lacked, but I don't regret it. Yes. And I had my good days, like, you know. Of course. I've, I've had my good share of whatever I think I need to do, but I, I think I could have been much more than that. 
uh, in my younger days. But um, no, it's, it's good now. I think you know I'm at the stage where I believe that that prevented me from a lot of mistakes in life, mm -hmm. in a way, uh, which other people fell into. So that's one advantage of it. Uh, the other thing is I get to do it now in a more comfortable manner. You know. Yes, you get yeah. to work hard, play hard. Yeah, I mean, you do it now with a wiser brains and yeah. and more comfortable. Because there's a th the thing is. Um, a lot of people in their 20s yeah. or early age, yes, they think I'm young, this is the time I go after the world and just explore and get lost. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you have to find yourself and build yourself so by the time you're in your next phase of life, you can have that, that choice to enjoy yeah. life yeah, yeah. the way you want Look, it. It's a matter of choice, to be honest. There isn't, I always say, it, there isn't a right and wrong. Like true. I know people who you know, lived their life in their 20s, partied so hard, uh, traveled the world, um, and then they got to a point, you know, in their mid thirties where they're like, you know, we've established nothing, you know, yes. and, and, uh, professionally, but they're happy about it, and they're good to live, you know, from one salary to another, you mm -hmm. know, day by day, and this is good for them, and I respect that. A lot of people are actually genuinely happy for that. They don't want, you know, the, the fancy cars. They don't want the, the, uh, you know, uh, the, all the luxuries. Yes. They're just people that enjoy it day by day. And I love that, by the way. A lot of people mm. have a lot of peace of mind when they establish that mindset. Others would rather, you know, no, skip I'm... out on all that mm. work because they want, you know, the, the best life. They want the achievements. They want to put their name out there. Uh, they want to leave a legacy behind. So mm. there's just different goals and different things. And I, re I noticed sometimes, like, you can look at the person that's just satisfied with his simple life and you know and you would envy him sometimes because mm. it's it's a very nice uh, feeling like you know being satisfied and and comfortable and uh, not just on the run yes uh, so i think i think that would be nice but i mean it's it's a character Do i believe you, you're born with it it's you think so yeah yeah you're not, you don't establish it it's, it's not something that... Is it something you're born with or is it something that's developed from the environment around you? You know, like nurture it's, versus... It's a, lot of, it's a lot of both, but I believe it's more of a thing that you're born with. Because you have, I've seen brothers, twins, that grew up in the same environment. One of them wants to play games on his PS5 all day long. And the other one is just thriving day and night, trying to build his company and like get his name out there and chasing interviews and social media and all that. And they grew up exactly the same way with the same atmosphere, with the same friends. They're born with it. I agree. It's something you, it's born inside yeah, of you yeah. and you can't, you're like, I have to do this thing. So for you talking about com coming to a point where you're satisfied, because mashallah, you've accomplished so much at, you know, a phenomenal time, time frame. Yeah. Uh, would you do you ever see yourself coming to a point where you're like, I can relax, like that's it, or do you think there will always be something? I don't know. Like the thing is, it's uh, it's a bit tricky because sometimes uh, you. I mean, we all need a break at some point, yeah. but even during the break, you're just laying on the beach and thinking, you know, what's next? What's next? What's next? So, <laughs> so yeah, so. <laughs> It's, I don't know, is that a break or not? Like, uh, does it count? Uh, me, yeah, and then an idea pops out and you just email it to your assistant suddenly just while you're there. So, uh, again, it's all That's in here. Habit. It's yeah. a habit. Yes. You know? And some people just enjoy but it that way. But it's a blessing. You can see it as a blessing because some people are like, I just need that idea, I just need that idea. Whereas if you have an overflow of ideas and you do them over and over and over, surely one would work out. Yeah. I mean, especially in business, if you're talking business, it's... I mean, most research have, have proved that one in nine startups works. Mm. One in nine business ideas works. So you need to go through at least, at least 27 business startups to have three running at the end of the day. And I think so that's, that's what separates pioneers. Yeah. From uh, I mean, that's what separates people from you know, not giving up and from those who do because yes. a lot of people go like, oh my God, I've done like 10 business ideas so far and none of them worked. Like 10 that will bring you one eventually, yes. you know, if, if you want to go by the charts. So if you want to be one of those people that has like, you know, uh, a holding group of like, you know, 
15, 20 companies, you are talking about an endless amount of trials. You, know, you need is. to keep on working day and night to end up with those. It just Otherwise, everyone would have been successful. That's everyone would true. have been famous. If it was easy, yeah. anybody would do it. You wouldn't have Forbes magazine because everyone would be on it. So <laughs> Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Thing, yeah. Talking about that topic, hmm. what is your biggest failure to date? And what biggest have you failure? Oh, I have so many. Business-wise? Any yeah. business life. I mean, I don't get into my personal life, but mm -hmm. business-wise, is uh, I've tried so many things. Like, some of them failed, some of them were big hits. Mm. And I'm just looking for the next one. So. What have you learned from your biggest failure? When you... The success of the next one. Oh, I love that. Yeah. The, uh, it's a true story, actually. I, I don't want to get into details because I have also partners on board, but the, the failure of one of the things I did was literally like a direct link to the success of the one after. That's amazing. You realize the gap, you know, yes. because of that. So. Well, Steve Jobs said you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking back. Like, yeah. So even if you fall, just keep going and you will understand yeah. why that happened in the back, you know. Oh, what's some mistakes that dentists make in business? They're too good with dentistry. Hmm. Well, that's it. They focus on the clinical, they yeah, forget They're them. just looking to perfect, you know, the next filling or the next veneer or the next implant. Um, you know, being a successful dentist is much more than just doing a good filling. Mm. If you want to have the whole package of being a successful dentist, because it takes communication skills, it takes management skills, it takes effort, it takes um, patience again. Mm. Uh, it's a lot of things. Experience, experience, not as an experience of how to drill, a, you know, a preparation or, or a crown, prep, crown preparation. Experience with, you know, dealing with this angry patient, uh, um, you know, dealing with this complaint, um, uh, dealing with a crowded waiting area, who goes yeah. first, who not. Um, working with, you know, uh, dealing with employees who are just in a bad mood today. Mm. You know, all of those things they create a successful dentist and a successful place to work at. So um, I always say it's much more than just attending courses to improve your next yeah. implant placement or whatever. You, we touched on earlier how dentists, we work literally with millimeters. Mm -hmm. And you know, being so attentive to detail can sometimes burn one out mm -hmm. because excellence is something we strive for, but you cannot always have perfection, mm -hmm. and there's a difference mm -hmm. in that. Um, as dentists, we, uh, even with management, sometimes we do exactly the same thing, and there's a lot of micromanagers or you know, taking everything bit by bit, and it can burn one out mm -hmm. on the team. How can a dentist or a leader avoid that? Which part? Avoid what? Uh, being so attentive to details that it leads to burnout of themselves and the team. Burnout. <laughs> Just do it. Yeah, burnout. <laughs> there's, there's no way to avoid it. Really? Look, mm. you are, I mean, depends on what standard are you working on, but I always say this. You're providing, first of all, you're working with patients, not customers. Mm -hmm. A patient, uh, his name indicates that he is not okay. Mm. Okay? And he's coming for something related to his health. You're giving injections, you're, you're, you're a physician, you're a person that is working with something very sensitive. So when it comes to that, you're not just preparing a salad and you forgot to put the olives. You know, mm. it's, it's a critical thing. It's, it's, uh, it's something that every person would desire perfection in. Mm. So uh, there's no way around it. And if, if I mean, talking business-wise, you're one of the most expensive services out there mm -hmm. as a dentist, you know? So yes. sometimes a single tooth could, you know, or two teeth could charge, which could charge like two, three thousand mm dollars. -hmm. And that's equivalent to a stay in a presidential suite in one of the top hotels in Dubai. So I always tell our staff members, I cannot allow it that our patient receives a better service there than here. Mm. Because he's paying here more than there. 
So if the receptionist there is smiling and smells good and has a beautiful you know, makeup on, we need to have better than that. If the waiter there is, is very friendly and very uh, empathetic with whatever is going on, our nurses must be better than that. If the manager there is always in his suit and always taking care of the details and always walking after you to make sure you're happy because it's hospitality, we need to do better than that because we're charging more, we have a bigger image and we have a bigger responsibility because they're preparing clean sheets on the bed. We're preparing a tooth. So is it someone's this, yeah. health? So yeah, let them all burn out. <laughs> Don't um. call me a dictator afterwards. <laughs> just, you asked me and I'm answering. So, <laughs> But it's true sometimes if you have a standard, you either jump on the train and achieve that standard or you jump off the station and go to another train. Yeah. There's always different levels in life and it's what you accept, what you allow is what defines you, to be honest. Exactly. Yeah. Um, talking about teams, you are a man, again, of many hats. How do you manage everything in your work life? How do you manage the dentist, the, the director, the manager? That's the hard part. Mm. That is the hard part. There is a lady standing there behind the camera. Uh, she's constantly chasing that uh, schedule mm. along with two others in the clinic. Um, so there, you need the right people around you to you know, help you with that because you have the schedule outside the clinic, the business schedule, you have your personal schedule, your personal life, and you have the patients and the schedule in the clinic. So you need to have people that are collaborating in between to make sure that there is nothing clashing, mm -hmm. you know, overlapping appointments. Um, don't expect to have much weekends because yep. there's always something happening. Uh, even, you know, a lot of sleepless nights. Like she gets my text messages around three, four in the morning. You know? wow. <laughs> so, uh, it's, I mean, that's how you, that's how you, you She's know. She's like, I'm confused. Are you just waking up? Are you going to sleep? What's yeah, happening? Yeah, no, it's, it's, you know, there's an idea that just popped, you know, you send it, you remember there was this meeting that you need to schedule. And yeah, it, that, it's a difficult thing. Just how do you find the right people? Like, what is it that you look for in your team? Um, Character and, and patience again, because I'm not very easy to work with. Mm. Some days are just, you know, very bad and if it ends up being bad for everyone usually. And uh, not everyone tolerates that. Mm. Like I cannot work with ego. I cannot deal with ego. Yeah. When it comes to work, we are all, all in. there for work, you yeah. know, like it doesn't matter if, if, for example, today we are shooting something, you know, you can find me like whatever scrubbing the floor like I find something on the floor I quickly go wipe it out uh, if I'm interviewing someone I will go bring the coffee I don't mind you know mm. because this is for work this is for business we all do everything mm. so if someone comes up to me and goes like hey you know like this is not my job to do or you know I'm much bigger than that so I'm not going to serve coffee or wipe the floor I'm sorry because I would do that yeah. you know I'm yeah. doing this for the business if it's good for me it's good for everyone uh, we, if we, you know, grow, we grow together. That's um, true. I'm looking to build a, a group and a family mm. uh, that whoever is an assistant today eventually will become a general manager. Yes. So uh, we all need to hustle for it, as they say. You know? So it's, it's all about the character, ambition, and um, accepting the situation. Yes, being yeah. flexible, because it truly takes a tribe. Yeah, I mean, make... especially in the beginning, you cannot expect to start off with like a team of 30 people, yes. uh, each one with a, a, one job, you know? No. It doesn't work like that. No. We all end up like, you start off with like two, three people at most. That's true. And everyone should carry at least 10 titles on his own. Yes. You know, so. That's true. That's, that's what I look for. So, I'm very, like, I don't end up with much. Like, I've had many that stayed for like a day or two. Really? Yeah. yeah. And I never, I never, like, I, I always lay my cards on the table, like, you know, this is what it is. Um, expect it. A lot of them will go like, yes, we'll, we'll do it. Yes. Third day, they're just crying somewhere in the corner, probably, or something. Like, they, so a lot of people don't take it. Mm. Uh, and I, I totally respect that. So I immediately stop, you know, thank you very much. We'll always be your friends and family. If you ever need anything, we're here for you, but this is not the place for you. Yeah, again, it goes back to the standards. Yeah. You have a goal. 
you're a man of focus. I can see that. Yeah. You're like, this is, it, this is how it has to be done. There's no way around it. I mean, you have to be laser focused to, to do this. It yeah. just doesn't work randomly. Take me, take me through your journey of how Liberty Dental Clinic grew. Because you, yes, you were growing up with your brother. You, kind of, you saw it yeah. with your first eyes. I see my brother, see my stress right now. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's going to study dentistry. Um, and I kind of see the similarities. So take me back. How was it through your eyes? How your brother grew from, okay, let's make the decision to open the small clinic and then make it expand it to, you know, this many chairs and then this t two buildings and now uh, two branches. And I saw that you guys are planning into international expansion, if I'm correct. Yeah. Yeah, so We're looking into hospitals now, like dental hospitals That's, rather than clinics. Yeah. What, what's the difference between dental hospitals and clinics? Uh, size, different management, and uh, you can operate uh, surgeries. You can do I GAs. I believe that will be a bit revolutionizing. Not a bit. It will be revolutionizing for dentistry. Yeah, and you can fit in many other sub specialties, specialties that you cannot really accommodate in a clinic. You know, yeah. like. Because we have specialties, mm. but there, you know, in dentistry there's like subspecialties for a lot of things. That's so true. in a hospital, you can start having that, and things that are related to dentistry. So you yeah. can have, you know, dietitians related to oral health, uh, uh, physiotherapists related, related to, to TMJ, TMJ and the neck pain, pain and yeah. back pain. So yeah, we have those, but like you cannot operate on a higher level if surgery is required or so. Yes. You know. Yeah. So, okay. so take me from your eyes from the beginning to... I don't think you wanna post want an to episode of four or five hours because that's, <laughs> that won't be you know, told. And, and, so this and is what happened. Yeah, it's, it's, very, it's a very long journey. Yeah. It started off in 1998. Um, I'll just give you, you know, a quick summary. Uh, in 1998, the, the small and the, the, the tiniest amount of money that we had in the whole family, uh, was put into the clinic. Uh, so it was a do or die shot. Mm. You know? uh, Dr. Majd was 23 years old and uh, he had to, you know, in a way take the responsibility of using this small amount to start something. Uh, he started the clinic and for the first year we would, you know, we'd go through almost sometimes a month without a single patient in the clinic. Mm. 21 days was the number. Wow. And then when things got better, we would have one patient every three days. Yeah. So we'd have roughly 11 patients every month. Wow. That was, that was the, uh, at that stage. Um, so it was a very tough, tough time for him. It was just him. And the first dentist to join the clinic was Dr. Nazim, Nazim Al Yusuf, who's still mm -hmm. with us today. That's After amazing. 25 years, he's the head of surgery department. He survived all the patients. He did, so he, he went through it all. <laughs> um, and they would alternate. So one would be a nurse and the other would be a doctor and they would switch, you know, just to work because they couldn't afford That's, hiring people. Yeah. And uh, at the same time, like they were receptionists as well. So if someone, the phone rang, one of them would hold the suction and like the <laughs> other one would go pick up and schedule the appointments. And then whenever we were available, uh, including myself, because I was like a little kid around them as well, uh, you know, would close the clinic at night, you know, just put some water on the floor, scrub it, clean everything, disinfect wow. all the instruments and materials for the next day. Um, whenever there was no patients in the clinic, uh, it, we'd sit in the corridor, like mainly Dr. Mirz and uh, uh, Dr. Nazim, in the corridor of the building, so they can switch off the AC in the clinic to save the charges of the electricity. Um, so be the beginning was like that. And then somewhere around, you know, um, Throughout those few years, Dr. Mez, you know, started visiting different schools to examine children mm. and, you know, do free consultations and would give them a report and parents would see the report. They would bring them to the clinic and bit by bit that grew. So uh, with a lot of children and a lot of young people being treated, uh, you obviously need ortho. Yes. Um, and that's where Dr. Mu'tasim joined almost uh, two years after in the, in the year 2000. He's still with us today also. He's the head of the ortho department. Um, Another survivor. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he, uh, you know, the, the, they started off from there. And then bit by bit, you know, mm. more specialists joined. Dr. Majd had his first media exposure, I think, around 2003, uh, when he was the first dentist signed with Sensodyne 
for I recommend Sensodyne for sensitive teeth, you know, this yeah. campaign. They still yeah. do it till today. Yeah. They do it with different dentists around the world. The first Arab dentist to start this campaign was Dr. Mejd. Oh. This was before Facebook started, because uh, Facebook was around yeah, 2006 so, uh, or yes. seven. Yeah. So he appeared on that, and then he appeared on the first uh, reality uh, show, uh, sorry, the makeover show, mm. uh, which was called Anti Ajmal on Dubai TV. This was before yes. Joel, I, um, I think, yeah. And then uh, he also appeared on Joel afterwards on NBC, and then, you know, that's media wise, because a lot of people mm. claim that, oh, social media, you know, you can just buy followers and stuff. It's different. You can you tell can. the difference. Like he's, he became the most followed dentist in the world because he started off like with the small things all yeah. back in the days, um, and you know, bit by bit, we moved from that small apartment in Bar Dubai to um, you know a standalone villa in Jumeirah, mm. and in 2010, uh, after the crisis happened, mm. our neighbor lost his business. So we took the next building. So we opened the two buildings together. Someone's so crisis. It was another one. Uh, no, it wasn't. We weren't very happy at that time either. Yeah. But we kind of forced ourselves to do it because we knew that this building is an opportunity that we'll mm. never have again. If someone took it, it's gone. So we took both of them, opened them. And that's when we had a fully integrated dental center with all specialties. Um, and, you know, a lot of achievements after that we have a timeline in the clinic it's like a full wall that has everything i'll show it to you next yeah. time um so yeah bit bit by bit you know everything it's, uh, came together it's i think the beauty of it is the humble beginnings and so it is. just starting burning that bridge and just starting and i think you know that exp uh, that graph of exponential growth yeah it always starts small and that's where a lot of people fall mm -hmm. because that curve to get through it it's hard hard it's hard and it's like a lot of pitfalls. Yeah. But if you go and then that's when people see up with the rise. That's why but gradual growth is important. Yes. Because a lot of people, for whatever reason, they get the chance to start big. Even those crash very quickly. Because when you, um, when you build a building, you have to have a good, you have, strong You need base. The, small, the small bricks yes. in the base that yes. hold the whole tower up there, you know? Yes. Uh, a lot of people have chopsticks with like a block underneath, uh, sorry, above that. So it, they, it, don't have it the, falls. they don't have the base to carry yes. all that. So it falls very quick. Yeah. That's why I always recommend, they ask me what's the best business scheme or what's the best uh, model to, to build a clinic. I tell them, work somewhere. You mm -hmm. know, you either have a deal with the owner to take over after some years, you know, bit by bit, take percentages, buy percentages, mm -hmm. because you grow, like you see the problems happening at first because you don't have the experience to handle this whole show at once, you know? So you take it step by step. Or, you know, work in a clinic as an employee for so long and then build your own thing. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people get the chance or the, the you know, financial support to just open a very nice practice all mm -hmm. at once. I've seen a lot of them fail because they depend a lot on social media mm -hmm. uh, or on the fancy walls and, you know, furniture. Uh, but the patient is coming for much more than that. That's true. So, yeah. And I believe there are some things you have to go through them in order to grow to the next level. Like with social media now, anyone can go on TikTok and people, young people, they can get instant success. But there are some things that they missed out on going through, mm -hmm. the hardships. Or, and you can see, I saw just a famous, um, TikTok, uh, sorry, famous person from Facebook, now that Facebook is a little bit dying Shaky. down yeah. yeah he's like what what do i do now like my, my career is yeah. over what um. you should have seen what happened when uh instagram went down for like eight hours nine yes. hours last year yes oh my god like the breakdowns that happened like i've had some influencer friends calling me they were <laughs> what do i do with my yeah head? like one of my friends actually she's a very popular influencer her account got hacked she lost it like she is like I'm, i have an event to attend tomorrow they're paying me for my coverage yeah. uh so it's 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 risky it's uh it's not the same you know uh, no. uh. having having something solid backs you up a lot yeah, yeah. and all this gold it's always you know yes all this gold as long as it's improving and being modernized well talking about all this gold yeah Tell us about your recent journey into NFTs, the yeah. modern um, crypto, the modern currencies of the world. Yeah. Uh, what made you 
think about of the idea, you know, let's open a dental NFT. Because our industry is an amazing industry with billions of dollars being invested yearly on research and whatsoever, clinically. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to keeping up with the outer technology that's happening in the world, it kind of takes some time mm, to bring it in. So I saw this one coming. I was like, might as well. Let's, let me be that guy, you know. <laughs> uh, let me just bring it in. Yes. And I did. We established the first uh, 3D uh, dental NFT. Um, and it's, um, it provides the utility that serves, first of all, dentist students and then dentists and then the patients on the long run. We're still planning that. But for the students, the community members have a utility of you know being connected to the biggest clinics and dentists around the world, having you know AMAs, uh, advices, the, the mm -hmm. access to speak to them and ask them questions. Um, I probably get you know some uh, mentorship programs with them or get to shadow them, if possible. Uh, also, like discounts and offers on courses that are very exclusive. Like I'm, I'm doing now one that fits only 15 people, and the priority goes to the NFT owners. Um, so stuff like that. Uh, for the patients, um, sorry, for the doctors, we are looking to collaborate with uh, companies mm -hmm. uh, to get offers and discounts from them for the NFT holders. So you can buy your dental equipment and material for a cheaper price. And for the general public, that's a, I mean, a kind of a very long-term project or plan, hopefully, is to kind of provide insurance-related or similar concepts so mm -hmm. the nft owners of the public but that's another project because it needs a bigger collection my collection is like very few pieces um, if we're going to open up for the patients we want to have something that will serve them which is an agreement with all different dental clinics and hospitals mm -hmm. uh, to provide the discounts free offers free packages for the nft holders in return for the you know um, exposure or the benefits that they can also utilize from the other utilities yeah. of the project um, so yeah, that's, well, that's, that's a great much vision it. because the future is crypto. I mean, that's that's just in terms of utilities and services. There's yes. another huge use for NFTs in the medical industry in general, not just in dentistry, which is the authentication, ownership, mm. who owns your records. Yes. With NFTs, we yeah. can you can create an NFT that will be the authentication for your records. You will be the owner of your records. As a dentist or as a patient? As a patient. So each patient will own an NFT which has his medical records. Oh, that's per that's that solves a lot of problems because yeah. you go to hospitals, you don't yeah. need to yeah go dig to up, it all, like, dig up, dig it all up, again. and then you won't suddenly find your teeth on an ad on the street, you know, yeah. before and after. Like you own those records, you know. There's a bit of a conflict of who. How owns does records. that affect dentistry? If if the dent if the would you say it's taking power away from and giving it it's to the It's not a big deal. No, it's not a big deal. Like a lot of dental schools, they tend to emphasize on that. I understand, yes, it's patient's right, but I mean, don't overdo it. You know, you can always ask the patient, especially That's in dentistry. True. Dentistry is the easiest part of medicine to promote. That is true. You know, because it's just this part, you can ask the patient yeah. and just have him sign on the file that you don't mind having your photos of your teeth on Instagram or whatever, and they would sign it. That's true. It's not a major yeah. issue. Other things, I understand. It might be sensitive, you know. Yes. For example, plastic surgeons, I understand. Yeah. It's a sensitive matter. But for dentistry, it's something very clear, very easy. Yeah. It's, yeah, so yeah. it's not a big issue. But in other industries, I think this will solve a problem. Yes, yeah. I, can see, I can see that. And I, even for students, because with lockdowns and going through COVID, mm -hmm. a lot of universities were like, oh, what do we do? And uh, they had to turn to online. Mm -hmm. So now they have access to all these sh programs mm -hmm. from you know, yeah. the pledge of their home. Exactly. Yeah, awesome. So tell me, uh, to wrap it up, mm -hmm. what does the future look like for you? The future looks like for me, uh, you know, just um, a very successful Liberty, a Liberty Medical Group um, with multiple, you know, branches around the world, accrediting multiple clinics by Liberty Dental Accreditation, which is a new project we're working on right now, having other clinics running Being by our friendly. systems. Um, hopefully our hospitals, we're also working on that as well. Um, yeah, just mainly that along with whatever comes with it you know in terms of side businesses and work and you know yeah. hopefully only the curve goes 
higher and higher and wish you more yeah. success. Thank you very much. Hopefully Appreciate we'll see it. in Australia, you never know. Yeah, uh, <laughs> hopefully. I haven't been to that part yet, so I think you we'll, should. we I'll should plan it. I'll tour you around yeah. for sure. Great. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Thank you very I much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care and I'll see you guys in another episode.